Uh, Chair Khan, just, just philosophically, in, in, in a lot of the cases that, that your FTC has brought, and I know you've seen uh, the criticism, but you made a comment that you know, mon monopoly power can manifest itself in a lot of different ways. Th there's an old expression that you show me the man and I'll show you the crime. And it almost seems to some people that maybe if you have a large corporation, successful <coughs> corporation, um, that you'll, you can find something or you will look to find something by the very nature of it being successful, almost as if you're assuming that they're guilty and they need to prove that they're innocent, which they've done a few times already with, with some of these cases. Is, is there anything to that? Is, is, is a big, powerful corporation, by definition, doing something wrong? Absolutely not. Look, we follow the facts and follow them wherever they lead us and are fully committed to enforcing the law without fear of favor. Um, sometimes in the past, you know, there have been instances in which enforcers have gone after just small firms and given big firms a pass, and, and we don't think that's right either. Uh, so we're really focused on applying the law in an even-handed way, uh, and if there's a law violation, that's really what we're focused on challenging. I want to ask one, uh, one other element of the case where you specifically cite this idea that third-party sellers are forced to use uh, the prime services and delivery services of Amazon as opposed to, as opposed to be able to do this separately, you meaning using a, a third party services. Uh, and you make the argument that this is a way for them to control their monopoly and power over these third parties. And yet, at the same time, if you look at what Amazon has said, um, is that when they tried, and there was a period of time where they tried uh, to allow third parties to use their own sellers and, and the like, or, or distribution partners rather than themselves, that the delivery wasn't up to the standard of Amazon, meaning Amazon would say, there's a two-day delivery. These guys wouldn't deliver in two days. They'd deliver in three days. They wouldn't work on the weekends and things like that. Isn't that a business decision that they should be able to make or no? So the lawsuit actually notes that um, those sellers oftentimes we're actually able to meet those same standards. Um, I'll be honest, Andrew, I think this is also an area where as more material, material in the complaint becomes unredacted, I think more full light will be shed on some of those dynamics um, and we'll be able to fully explain why that was anti-competitive. Uh, Chair Khan, uh, Tim Wu was here last week and he's been one of the architects with trying to come up with ways to go after uh, big tech for the Biden administration. Obviously, he's not in the administration anymore. He said one of the frustrating parts of the Obama administration was that they would not bring a case unless they were absolutely 100 percent sure that they would win. But he worries that the, the new theory that, that you've kind of employed means that you're not going to win every case. You might lose a lot of cases. And he worries that eventually there is a price to pay for that. What, what do you think about that theory, about how many cases you have to win if it's a problem, if you don't win a case that you've brought? Look, we're focused on bringing cases that we believe we can win. Uh, we only bring cases when we believe there's a law violation. And if we believe there's a law violation, we're going to fight. Um, of course, things don't always go our way. And, and when we suffer setbacks, we look at the decisions closely and figure out you know, steps forward. Um, but we think this is an enormously strong lawsuit uh, on the merits and are looking forward to explaining to a judge how it is that Amazon has violated the U.S. antitrust laws. Chair Khan, before we go, just in terms of uh, looking at a calendar and the permutations with which this could take, how long do you imagine this, this case takes? Well, look, Andrew, it's no secret that antitrust uh, litigation can take some time and it can be you know, a few years before a matter goes to trial. Uh, we think that there is enormous urgency here in terms of the harms that the American public is facing, uh, paying higher prices, getting lower quality, uh, competitors being locked out of the market unfairly. And so we're going to be moving with as much urgency as we can.